Hi there guys, this is Miss Nelson again, and today we are doing lesson 2.3 in our 4th grade Florida Go Math book. Lesson 2.3 is about multiplying tens, hundreds, and thousands, and they're hoping that we can use our understanding of place value to make that easier for us. So, um, just to let you know, this lesson, lesson 2.3, is kind of long because they give us four different ways to learn how to do this. One way here you can see is to draw a picture. Another is to use place value with words. They also have using a number line in this and using what we call patterns with basic facts. So four different ways to solve a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through these four different ways quickly, but I'll just let you know right now, like using basic facts is the easiest, quickest, and that's what you're probably going to do in real life. So that's what we're going to use in our class. So first of all, we have this problem. Each car on a train has 200 seats. How many seats are on a train with eight cars? So you always go through first and underline your math words and your numbers. When we have the word each in a math sentence or math problem, it means multiply. And our numbers that we're multiplying are 208. So they've written that out for us here already. 8 times 200 is our problem. So this is where place value comes in with a quick picture. Place value we know when we're drawing hundreds. We learned in chapter 1 that you draw flats. That one flat is equal to 100. We have 200, so we need to draw two flats. And then we need to do that eight times. So here's my two flats that I drew eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, we learned in chapter one also, when you have a group of 10 flats or 10 hundreds, that's equal to 1,000. And then we have these left over. It doesn't equal up to 10, so we just count these as hundreds. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. So, 600. So we have 1,000 plus our 600 at the bottom gives us 1,600. So that's how you can use place value models to solve a multiplication problem. Another way using place value is to write the place value in words. So here's our original problem, 8 times 200. So we're going to write out the numbers 8 times 2 hundred. And then you kind of just ignore these words over here until the end. So you're just going to deal with the numbers, which are 8 times 2 is 16. 16 hundredths, in your head, you know hundredths have two zeros. So you repeat your 16 and add your two zeros. So same answer, there are 1,600 seats on a train with eight cars. Okay, that's the first two ways to do it. Now let me pull over this. We're going to see the other two ways to solve this kind of a problem. Number line. It gives us a dis different problem this time. It says Bob's Sled Shop rents 4,000 sleds each month. How many sleds does the store rent in six months? Okay, now remember, first thing we do is underline our numbers and math words. We got 4,000, the word each, which we remember means multiply, and six. So our problem is going to be 6 times 4,000, they've written that here for us. So it says multiplication can be thought of as repeated addition, draw jumps to show the product. So using a number line, what we do is we see that we're going to make 6 jumps. Each of those jumps have to be 4, so we're going to be counting by 4. So here we've got 1 jump, 2 jumps, 3 jumps, 4 jumps, 5 jumps, 6 jumps. In each of those jumps, we count by four. So if we start at zero, counting by four would be zero, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four. So we've got twenty-four. Six times four is twenty-four. And then we just add on our three zeros back here. So on the first, we make the same number line, but the first we add one zero to each of our numbers. So this could say zero, zero. 4 becomes 40, 8 becomes 80, 12 becomes 120, 16 becomes 160, 20 becomes 200, and 24 becomes 240. So now we know 6 times not just 4, but 40, see now we're counting by 40s as we jump, is 240. 
but we're not done yet because we don't just have 6 times 40. We also have to show 6 times 400 and then finally 6 times 4,000. So it's kind of a pattern you see here on our number line. The next one we just add a zero to each one. That means we're counting by four hundredths. And then if we count by four thousands, we add another zero. So our final answer of six times four thousand is twenty-four thousand. So that's how to use a number line to solve this problem. So it says Bob Sled Shop rents twenty-four thousand sleds that looks like a nine that's supposed to be four in six months okay now finally we're to the last way and this is the way that you're going to use in real life and it's the easiest way so we are doing this this problem here using patterns the basic fact is three times seven equals 21 and then you can just add zeros three times 70 if you add a zero over here you add one over here if you add two zeros here you're going to add two more zeros over here. If you add three zeros, you're going to have your same basic fact and add three zeros over here. So again, say we started off with eight times five equals 40. That's our basic fact, that first one. If we add a zero to that five, we have to add a zero over here to our answer. If we add two zeros to the five, we have to add two zeros to our answer. If we add three zeros to the five, we add three zeros to our answer. That's called using the basic fact. So now let's go back and solve this problem using the basic fact. If we have six times 4,000, we can do six times four, which is 24, and then just add the three zeros. And we have the answer without even having to do the number line or draw a picture or anything like that. So if we go back to our first page, these other two ways that they showed us how to solve problems, we have this problem 8 times 200. We can use the basic fact of 8 times 2, 8 times 2 is 16, and then add our zeros onto the end, 1600. See how easy using a basic fact is? And this is the same problem, so we won't do it a second time. So my advice to you during lesson 2.3 and from here on out is if you have a number, a multiplication problem, where you're multiplying either by 10, that means it has one zero, hundreds would have two zeros, thousands would have three zeros, that you use the basic fact method. So you do the first two numbers, multiply those, and then just add your zeros to the end to get your answer. It's the easiest way to do it. And in real life, you're probably not going to sit down and draw a picture or use place value or draw a number line. So hopefully this helps you to understand how to multiply in an easy way, tens, hundreds, and thousands. Basic fact is what it's called, using base, the basic fact and adding your zeros. Easiest way to do it. And if you have any questions, just go ahead and leave me a message and hopefully I'll be able to get back to you. Thanks.